I'm going to talk to you today about spatial thinking. Spatial thinking is something we use all the time. For example, the discovery of DNA's double helix structure, using our fingers to count numbers, or a geographic map to support a crisis response. I would argue that the whole purpose behind crisis maps, crisis mapping, and many of the technologies and ideas we've heard about today all link back to spatial thinking, or using the properties of space to structure, solve, and reason about problems. Various crisis maps, data streams, hashtags, drone platforms, and so forth will come and go. But is the underlying spatial thinking supported by, these, uh, supported by these items that will persist? Now, as a geographer, I am passionate about how spatial thinking skills can be developed and supported using maps and geographic information communication technologies. To illustrate these examples, I draw on three examples from my research. I'm currently involved in UK DFID-funded research in Rwanda, looking at building spatial thinking skills in Rwandan secondary students. I'm particularly excited about this work as our team is helping to build the next generation of crisis mappers in the developing world. For example, none of our students, let alone our teachers, had ever heard of the ideas of spatial thinking or geo-ICTs. That's why I particularly like this image, as it shows a student learning about geo-ICT from his teacher. Our students are learning how to think spatially and use GIS and GeoICTs to address local important issues. For example, this student-created three-dimensional map that shows areas of high risk around a school due to erosion and landslides. Furthermore, our research is demonstrating that by emphasizing spatial thinking skill development as opposed to ICT software training, our students are learning to think broadly about issues in their community and Rwandan society. Another exciting part of the work is the development of a free and open source learning environment called Iwachu. And I would be happy to talk to you about Iwachu during the rest of the conference as we are actively looking for partners to help grow and use Iwachu. I also have a book coming out this fall titled Geographic Information Systems for Disaster Management. Now in the process of writing this book, I interviewed a diverse international collection of disaster management practitioners, many of which emphasize the importance of spatial thinking. For example, Dr. Michael Udax emphasized the importance of looking at disasters from multiple spatial perspectives. For example, during a flood, considering environmental effects along with psychological factors and socioeconomic factors. Laurent Cesarin, who is working on the Cameroon-Nigeria boundary demarcation for the UN cartographic section, reflects in the book how defining a precise boundary, although for legal reasons, also has implications for cross-boundary disaster management tasks. Finally, I've been conducting research with one of my students, Ashley Miller at RIT, along with UNU EHS to build serious spatial thinking games. The idea here is to use gaming concepts to teach spatial thinking to people that are either new to GIS, disaster management, or both. The game works by using a scenario-based environment where the game player has to use GIS to make spatial thinking decisions. For example, a Category 5 hurricane approaching a coastal city much like Hurricane Sandy in 2012. As you can see here, the game player is being prompted with three choices to make as to which type of ground elevation representation they should include in their map to make a decision about potential storm surge. For example, a contour map would be a better ground elevation representation choice than either a digital elevation model or survey control points. And based on the choice made by the game player, a score is generated that can be used to measure the game player's spatial thinking ability. We've also been working on mechanisms to provide feedback to the game player based on their spatial thinking choices. And again, I want to emphasize the, the, the emphasis of this work is to build spatial thinking skills and not GIS software training. Like our other research, we're also looking for partners on this work. For example, if you're an expert in disaster management, we'd like to incorporate your knowledge into a game scenario. If you're a developer, you can help us build the game or just play the game itself and help give us some feedback. So I hope in the course of this talk, I've demonstrated to you the importance of the relationship between spatial thinking and crisis mapping, and perhaps given you some ideas how you might incorporate a spatial thinking perspective into your own work. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.